Each Thursday night at this time, Chrysler Corporation's famous four cars, Plymouth, Dodge, DeSoto, and Chrysler, will bring you Major Bowes and his original amateur hour. For this initial program, the honor city is Detroit, home of Chrysler Corporation. If you live in or near Detroit, you can vote for your favorite amateur by telephoning Cherry 5111. In New York City and vicinity, you can vote as always by phoning Murray Hill 8 9933. Elsewhere, send a letter or postcard to Chrysler Corporation in care of your own station. And here's a new way you can vote. Go into any one of the 12,000 Plymouth, Dodge, DeSoto, or Chrysler showrooms. Listen to the program and vote on the special ballot you will find there. Whether you drop in to listen and vote or to look over the famous four cars, you will always find a warm welcome. And here is Major Bowes and his original amateur hour. Major? Thanks again. All right. Thank you, Dan. Good evening, friends. A new setting, a different hour, another night. But here is the same Wheel of Fortune starting off on a merry spin. Around, around she goes, and where she stops, nobody knows. Now, first we have Joe Smith. Joe Smith, singer and tap dancer from the Bronx. You're coughing very well this evening, Joe. And how old are you? I'm 46 years old. I weigh 210 pounds and stand five foot three in my stocking feet. <laughs> well, that's a pretty portrait, isn't it? What's your, what's your work? I'm a taxi driver, and I drive one of those. Oh, wait, wait a minute now. As you I was going to. As I was going to say, I drive one of those open-air DeSoto cabs. <laughs> Let me see. The kind where the roof slides back and it gives you practically an open car, huh? Sure. And this will slay you. Is that a threat? No, my wife told me to tell you. If I tell you this, it will go over big. <laughs> well, all right. Go ahead and tell it, too. I was answering a call. And a lady hails me, so I pulls over, and I says, Lady, I am answering a call. And she said, I don't care, I want your cab. So then I said to her, Well, it's very mighty nice of you, lady, but there are other cabs. But she says, No, I want your cab. Well, naturally, she wanted a nice, easy riding cab. Of course. Yes, but that ain't all. Listen, I said to her, I says, <coughs> It's very flattering, but there are other cabs. Why won't one of them do? Yes, go on now. What did she say? Come to. And she said to me, well, I am moving. And I, I think I have a tree that is five, uh, six foot tall. And if I take your taxi cab, I can put it on my lap and let it stick out of the top. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you going to sing and dance? I'm going to sing It's a Sin to Tell a Lie in eighth flat. <laughs> well, <coughs> <I'm> it. <laughs> Be sure it's true when you say I love you. It's a sin to tell a lie. So be sure it's true when you say I love you. It's a sin to tell a lie.
Smith S. Joe Smith of New York, taxi driver. The road is smooth and wide. Our motor is quiet and sure. We pull our Chrysler to the curb and gently press the brake. We are in Detroit, where America's motorcade begins. Detroit has had an unimpeded rapid rise. Its early history is vibrant with adventure, its future glowing with expectancy and assurance, and why not? Three flags have flown over this city, French, English, and American. 4,000 population in 1832, a century later, nearly a million and three quarters. The principal gateway to our friendly northern neighbor, Canada, Detroit has 1093 different kinds of industry. Leading, of course, is automobile manufacturing. 75% of the cars in America are made here, and 94% are built within a radius of 75 miles. The pertinences for motor vehicles, printing, publishing, meat packing, more riverborne traffic passes this city than any other in the world. During the season, a steamship glides by every three minutes. From this port, motor cars are carried to all parts of the globe so that a universe may ride in comfort, speed, and safety. Detroit headlines as world leader in wire spring production, vacuum cleaners, marine engines, hydraulic hoists, air conditioning machines, stove manufacturing. But all week, work and no play would make Detroit a dull place, so she's provided her people with clubs and schools, with theaters and parks. She has built her tree-lined avenues wide, and she keeps them spick and span. I've made many visits to Detroit, and I know the hospitality and graciousness of her people. A message from Governor Fitzgerald truly states, your salute to the city of Detroit is also a tribute to the true spirit of America. In her infancy, Detroit rose from the ashes to become America's fourth city. In her maturity, she led that nation in the fight to overcome depression. We need not fear for the future so long as such courage asserts itself in the solution of our national problems. And for Chrysler Corporation, I say amen to that in our gesture of admiration for Detroit tonight. <clears throat> and from Detroit is Robert, Robert Rowe, bass singer, Bells in the Lighthouse. From Detroit, have you studied voice, Robert? I have made it on and off for about four or five years. My father was the bass singer in our cathedral choir in Cornwall, England, for over 40 years. And what's your work? I learned my trade in the old country, an automobile trimmer. You mean upholstering automobiles, huh? Hmm? Yes, Major. And the boys at the shop, they call me Singing Bob. But sometimes they call me, they sometimes they spell it with a double O. <laughs> All right, Bill's in the lighthouse. <clears throat> from Detroit, and the telephone of Detroit is Cherry 5111, and in New York it's Murray Hill 89933. Hilda Morse is next, Hilda Morse, 17 years of age, lyric soprano in New York City. She 
You go to school, Hilda. Well, I graduated high school at 15, Major. And since I've been out of school, I've been helping Mother and Daddy in a small hand laundry we have in the Bronx. I operate the mangling machine. You're a busy girl. <laughs> yes. And besides that, I do all the cooking and baking, too. The whole neighborhood likes my pies. Oh, let's talk about pies. What's your specialty? Well, my apple meringue is famous. I'll send you a barrel of apples right after the first <laughs> frost. What's your, amb <laughs> What's your ambition? Well, I do hope to someday sing at the Metropolitan. So who you see, I have much at stake tonight, Major. Well, you're not fail, I'm sure. What do you want to sing? I'd like to see, sing Un Bel D. One fine day from Madame Butterfly. That's almost too much to expect from a 17-year-old girl. All right, then. Hilda Moss, the laundry worker in the Bronx, blonde, slender, lovely to look at, charming personality. It'll be interesting now to see what happens in her career. There are many who have talent, but her, who are too timid to try for this program. But be not afraid, you'll be most welcome. Just write a letter from New York or its vicinity, giving full particulars. And here's a report of last Sunday's voting from Kansas City, Kansas, where Gladys Butler, foster mother of two children, Lloyd Gelvin, he works 15 hours a day, 16 really, but still has time for singing. And Elizabeth Gunther's secretary, she sang Sympathy Waltz. And followed the Burns sisters singing a dancing team, Rita Frook, 19-year-old impersonator. Walter Heapy, member of the harmonica band that slung out harmonica Harry. Yi Xuan Quan, Chinese soprano, prima donna. Don Kane, yodeler, Paul Cable, youthful cornetist, and Robert Hines, his dad was a traveling salesman. At next Thursday night, the honor city of the Chicago, Illinois. In recent years, the I knew there was a man from Chicago in the house somewhere. <laughs> in, in recent years, I like Chicago too. 
The accord between employee and employer in great corporations has continuously grown. And our audience tonight is the president of the largest public utility corporation in the world, a man of vast ability and a heart overflowing with the milk of human kindness. A man who is always deeply concerned with the welfare of his army of employees, no detail in the life of the humblest one is outside the ken of his deep interest. He's a close friend of mine, so close indeed, that I dare to take him unawares as I am now doing. He's the president of the Consolidated Edison Company of New York. His name is Frank W. Smith. Stand up here, Frank. Get up. Stand up. Come on. Oh, <laughs> you go over to that. You go over to that microphone, there, Frank. I don't. I know how old you are, so I won't have to ask you that. But are you married? <laughs> yeah. Are you nervous or just sad about it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's all right. I'll make my peace with Mel. Don't you worry too much about it. Oh, boy, you're going to get it for this. I'll tell you <laughs> Frank, how old were you when you went to work for Consolidated? Well, Major, uh, that's serious. Uh, I'll do most anything for you. I'll even, even answer that. I was uh, 13 years old. 13 years old when he went to work, and that's an object lesson to the youngsters of the land and Horatio Alger's story, if ever there was one. Have you studied music? <laughs> no, you're on this track. Well, now, before I answer that, Major, I want to say something very serious to you. First, I want to congratulate you on this, your premier broadcast. I want to wish you all the great success in the world which you really deserve. And finally, I want to say, <laughs> finally, I want to say that you're doing a great service for the young people in our country, opening the door of opportunity to them that they may never have had opened before. And I greatly appreciate what you're doing for us. Well, Frank. <laughs> Not there. Thanks a lot for that, but what I must know is, have you ever taken music lessons? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, have you ever taken answer? I had to try to answer. <laughs> <laughs> On the ground that it might incriminate you, huh? Well, Frank Smith, you know very well that you're a wonderful harmonica player. <laughs> 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 and... <laughs> <laughs> Last week, no, this is the truth, it's got to come out sometime. Last week, when I had a chance for a birdie on your own golf course, you pulled out a harmonica and played, listen to the mockingbird, and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> and I missed a three foot putt. <laughs> now, come on, go into the microphone. Don't look at me, I can't stand it. I'll help it, I can't help it. How long had it been since you'd played a harmonica? Well, that's the first time I've played it since I was 14 or 15 years old. <laughs> and I want to say that you swiped my harmonica right there and there. Yes, I did. Here it is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a perfectly good two-bit harmonica. Now you can say that, listen to the Mockingbird. <laughs> well, that's it, all right. Well, uh, be it on your own head, Major. <coughs> Heaven well, help the listeners. Get the gun right. ready. I've got more of a cushion on my head than you have. I can take it. Listen to the Mockingbird. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm going to keep the harmonica. <laughs> well, Frank. <laughs> Well, Frank, I compliment you a game. I don't think I could have gone through it, but you did. I'm sure you'll forgive me, and so will Nell, too. <laughs> For the gorgeous flowers that so lavishly decorate this radio theater, I'm deeply indebted. The display of gladiolas beggars description I've never seen so such beautiful ones and so many of them. My thanks to the grower, Carson Stewart of Sharon, Pennsylvania, who brought them here. He's a loyal listener. Among them are 2,000 of the prize-winning Major Blows Gardiolas named for me last year. The basket of dahlias upon the piano comes from the American Dahlia Society of Michigan, whose national show opens tomorrow in the Convention Hall, Detroit. Mayor Frank Cousins sends his greetings and we reciprocate with congratulations to him for his fine work as honorary president of the Boys Club in Detroit. And greetings and thanks to the Detroit Times and the News and the Free Press. From the sister cities of Detroit come congratulatory messages. Mayor Campbell of Ann Arbor, Mayor Harvey of Point Huron, where there's a branch plant of the Chrysler Corporation. From Saginaw, Dearborn, and from Mayor Burrell of Ypsilanti, and from Mount Clemens, the home of Selfridge Field, a part of our national defense. A month from today, the great Mitchell Trophy race and air corps maneuvers will be held at Selfridge Field, and also one from Lansing, Michigan's capital. Now, the first telephone bulletin is due, but sadly is just, here it is. I just hold out my hand and everything, automobiles and everything dropped right into it. Joe Smith, at the taxi dancer has received 1,175 telephone calls already. Robert Howe from Detroit. Oh, Detroit's very busy on the telephone. 3,475. And Hilda Moss, the little 17-year-old girl, 807. We'll hear more a little bit later. And I have a telephone telegram here. Business is picking up. Telegram from Rex Cole ordering three Plymouth cars. Thanks to Rex. So anybody... <laughs> Anybody else interested, I shall be at home to messenger boys all evening. Now, <laughs> George Marshall. George Marshall, Negro boy baritone from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. And George, what is your work? I do, I've done most, most hard labor, Major. I work in the anthracite coal mines in uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, I was also a water boy for a construction company. And while in Rocky Mount, North Carolina, I worked in the copper fields and the tobacco fields. And what's your ambition, John? I want to be a minister and preach the gospel. Fine singing voice to great advantage. What's the song? Land of Degradation. All right. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, 
George Marshall, George Marshall from Wilkes-Barre, about a year ago, Clyde Barry, another Negro boy, appeared on this program without friends and without funds, and he sang that very same song. Today, Clyde Barry is an important, important sustaining artist on the Columbia Network, very network. This is a memorable and inspiring night, an epoch-making night for me, my first program for the Chrysler Corporation. My greatest satisfaction perhaps lies in the fact that as a result of an intensive study, I feel that every person whom I might persuade to investigate any one of our famous four cars will do so to his or her decided benefit. Major, may I present a few quick facts? Go right along, Dan. There are certain things you get in any one of the famous four cars. Plymouth, Dodge, DeSoto, Chrysler. All four have safety steel bodies. You ride surrounded by steel. Yes, even the floors are steel. All four have genuine equalized pressure hydraulic brakes. So when you say stop, she stops. These two things alone mean safety for the American family. All four have floating power. The engine is so balanced and cushioned that you have to step on the accelerator before you're sure it's running. All four have new scientific distribution of weight, an amazing advance in riding comfort pioneered by Chrysler Corporation. And remember, only in the famous four cars, Plymouth, Dodge, DeSoto, and Chrysler, do you get all these engineering features that make for safety, comfort, and economy. Plymouth starts at $510 list price in Detroit, and it is the biggest, roomiest car in the lowest price range. The dependable, money-saving Dodge starts at $640. The beautiful, smart DeSoto is priced as low as $695. And you can even get a luxurious Chrysler for as little as $760. Finally, remember that you can own any of these cars on easy time payments through commercial credit company time payment service. approaches to bring us together again, I hope. To our old friends and to the new ones, our thanks and our pledge of the best efforts of the Chrysler Corporation, our amateurs, and yours sincerely. Good evening, friends. Broadcasting System.